Thanks, Ryan. And with the trade deadline quickly and fast approaching, we got to bring in our own Michael Scott with Hoops Hype National News going on right now. And I first have to ask you about Kyrie Irving. As we learn about the future of Kyrie Irving, what was your reaction to hearing about a potential trade? You know, I think, Megan, the first thing that stuck out to me was it was underwhelming, the duo between him and, and Kevin Durant. Ultimately, they won one playoff series. So did Darren Williams beforehand. A lot more was expected of this duo from not only themselves, but from the public and management here as well. Uh, ultimately, I remember talking with a source close to James Harden when he got traded. And at the time when Harden wanted out, the source told me that you couldn't trust Kyrie. And that became evident over the years with Kyrie. Uh, he had missed games, he missed half the games pretty much that he could have played in. Um, and looking at a trade request now after this team was on such a hot run, it, was, it seemed like a little coordinated because when the Los Angeles Lakers got Rui Hachimura, it took away some of their cap space looking ahead towards the summer. So that kind of put it um, at a needle moving point for Kyrie because that would have been leverage against the Nets in free agency down the line. So either he was going to get his money from the Nets in an extension or you go to a team and you can use his bird rights in a trade to go over the cap and get him. So once the Nets and Kyrie had extension talks for about a week, a little plus, and it didn't materialize, it was time to go. And now as we're still learning some more information about that, and we'll get that in the coming days and coming hours, but when you look at the Nets roster right now, what stands out about the future of this team, especially when they, when they finish out the regular season? Yeah, there's still work to be done, Megan. I think certainly for the Nets looking into, into the front court, uh, if they can, I think more towards the buyout market. We've seen in the past when they've gotten LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin. Uh, unless they go big game hunting with a guy like Pascal Siakam, uh, who they have expressed interest in, you know, Toronto previously looked at Nicholas Claxton last year for a first-round pick for him. He's a guy certainly they would want in talks and a boatload of draft picks. We've seen Rudy Gay, excuse me, Rudy Gobert set the market and an exorbitant one at that for draft capital for star players. Uh, Pascal would be a great fit here, but they've also had other talks. Fred Van Vliet as well. Uh, OG Ananobi's been a guy that they've liked. It's interesting, though, because they did get Dorian Finney-Smith in the deal, one of the most versatile two-way defenders, 3 and D kind of guys in the league, and he's got good size, which they've been lacking a little bit here. Um, so I think for the Nets, a little bit more front court you can look at uh, as we – move close to the trade deadline and especially the buyout market if they don't land a front court guy via trade. What other team are you closely looking at that could be making some moves? Well, Meg, I think first off, if you're looking at the uh, trade deadline game of poker, I think the Toronto Raptors are certainly the dealer right now. Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet, and Gary Trent as well, who's another guy that's going to command over $20 million annually in free agency with him expected to opt out of his player option. OG Ananobi's had uh, no shortage of suitors, the Phoenix Suns, the New York Knicks, though I don't think Masai is necessarily looking to deal with the Knicks given his relationship with them. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, you're uh, old stomping ground as well. They've certainly got a boatload of draft picks, uh, a Canadian swingman at that and Dylan Brooks that they can dangle, and Danny Green's expiring contract for the Suns. Certainly plenty of draft capital, and I know that Chris Paul got dangled a little bit in the Kyrie Irving talks. I don't know if he would go in a, in a deal for OG, but they've got pieces as well. And with Matt Ishbia coming in, the new owner for the Phoenix Suns, I've heard from people he is looking to make a splash. No better time to do it than come on in and, and right at the trade deadline when the Phoenix Suns are a team that's looking uh, to be a title contender. And lastly, sticking out in the Western Conference, I look at the Utah Jazz. I look at the Utah Jazz because they've got Mike Conley, who's drawn interest from the Los Angeles Clippers. They're certainly looking to upgrade. Looked at Fred Van Vliet as well. Uh, distantly Kyle Lowry a little bit too due to his relationship with Kawhi Leonard and the duo of Malik Beasley one of the top shooters in the league uh, the top three-point shooter off the bench and Jared Vanderbilt a, a wonderful power forward who can rebound and hustle with the best of them those two have been linked together in a bunch of talks certainly with the Atlanta Hawks for John Collins uh, with the New York Knicks for Obi Toppin Evan Fournier and draft capital there's a lot of moving and shaking out there and Utah's kind of in that middle right now where being 500, they've defied expectations from the outside, and privately I think they would say their own as well. So they've got to decide if they want to go into the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes and really get as many assets as they can down the line or punt and look towards next year or the offseason to make those moves. But those two teams... Meg, I think there's no question that they're the dealers right now. No question. A lot to follow. Could this be the wildest trade deadline week that we've seen in a while? I think so. You know, it's funny, Meg. Leading up to it, it was, it was, oh, it was a lot of quiet. There's not a lot going on. 
And that's when it's going down, because normally when it is that quiet, GMs are trying to get things done and hammer out deals. A lot of times you'll see things leaked, whether it's from an agent or an executive, and that's leading up to it to kind of move things along and up offers elsewhere. I think right now we're seeing more everybody going into their offices, shutting, shutting it down, and trying to hammer out deals. And certainly Sean Marks is going to be one of them. He's got a lot riding on this trade deadline. You've got the happiness of Kevin Durant, who you know, de debated leaving here, came back, has been everything that they wanted on the court. He's been fully committed. That's one thing you can never question about Kevin Durant, his love for basketball and his uh, affection for his teammates and trying to win. So I think you have to, in a way, do right by him. Certainly, from the outside looking in, you, you talk to other executives around the league, the loss of Kyrie Irving on paper hurts them hurts the Nets' chances, even though they added their depth. So I do think there could be a swing for the fences move here. At least they will try, uh, Brooklyn. You know, like I mentioned with Pascal Siakam, I think that would be certainly a blockbuster move. Uh, so time will tell, but definitely looking forward to it for sure in the coming days, and the phone's going to light up like Times Square on New Year's Eve, Meg. Michael, it's going to be a busy week for you, and now as you see, Ryan, this is why we had to talk to him and break all this down. Let's send it back out to the studio.